Okay, hello everyone. It is weird and wild here in Salinas, California. I, if you'll see pictures I just posted on my Facebook page, it is glowing orange everywhere with no smell of smoke and it is super, super quiet. So it's been really strange. Anyway, another About Time presents with one of my favorite people of all time, all the way over in Old Town, Maine. This is Janice Boynton. Say hello, Janice, to everybody, all those people. Oh, they're already joining us. Hello, everybody. Oh, good. Hello. Fantastic. Oh, so Paula wants me to use a specific New Zealand-specific candy name for our operation. Oh. We'll see. We'll have to talk about it. We'll see what we do. But anyway, today, I haven't done a About Time um, Presents in a while, and uh, no reason, just been busy watching the news and I have turned off my, um, I've canceled my YouTube TV membership. So I was spending about four hours a day watching the news and I think I will have more time on my hands now. <laughs> You'll be a little saner too. I think, I think so. I'm watching just little snippets of the news on the, on the internet, on YouTube, and then I'm reading the, like the Washington Post and the New York Times and stuff. So I think I shall be informed enough. Anyway, so Janice and I have embarked on this journey, like what, 10 videos ago, to record one, maybe two videos on facilitated communication and rapid prompting method. And we're at like 20 something hours in already and we still are working That's our way through. Funny to it's talk fun. about. I've learned a lot. We've met a lot of really interesting people. At least I've met them. They might've been people you knew ahead of time, but I, I sure liked it. The Howard Shane we interviewed the other day was really really great well yep. all of them good egg good, but that one was just stand out and kind of great yeah yeah so we're going to be talking oh so housekeeping no not housekeeping as in my house but <laughs> housekeeping is um make sure that you share oh oh robert wallace finley that's right he's in maine too where are you at in maine um we have uh we have a about time channel. We have about time uh, website. We have about time project YouTube channel. And hopefully somebody will share that in the um, discussion we are be able to have here on Facebook. And this will, video will eventually make it over to YouTube so that um, other people can watch it who are not Facebook users. And we picked an interesting topic today that was really hard for you and I, I think both to watch. Janice, you want to set it up? Yeah, we're today we're talking about a movie called Wretches and Jabberers. And it's about, um, well, it's promoted as um, two individuals with um, autism who are traveling the world and spreading the news about, um, uh, I wanted to say about facilitated communication, but that's not, <laughs> no. that's not the promo is not going to say that. It doesn't say that. Um, they're spreading the news about um, inclusion and diversity and human rights um, when it comes to people with disabilities. That's the great message. Yeah, I'm all for that. Let's have yeah. more of that. Yeah, me too. Where, where, where does it kind of turn dark? Well, the problem with the whole thing is that um, they use facilitated communication, which um, the movie was put out in 2011. And they knew um, by then that that FC had been debunked. And so they were, they put it out as um, typing, they were they were um, typing with communication, or I don't know what they were calling it exactly. And um, the messages, there's, there's no indication to me that the typed messages were actually coming completely from the individuals that were being facilitated they were the what what is kind of interesting is that the two individual the two main individuals um, both have written language reading and spoken language abilities but they're much much more limited than what the typed typed messages would have you believe so that's where it kind of goes uh, astray for me. Um, the other thing is that the team. Yeah. We, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that they travel. They're they're on a mission 
to this noble, interesting mission to show people in other countries what a person, you know, with their with their communication and their abilities and just what they're like as as autistic. Yeah, they're both autistic. Yeah, yeah. so I can say that they're they're autistic individuals that are their autism reflects and I'm trying to say this correctly. The autism is reflected in certain ways that might make yeah. people uncomfortable in a social situation, especially if you aren't used to it. Yep. Some of their behaviors, um, they, they, uh, in particular, there's one that, that is actually quite, um, and they make a point about talking about it, that, that he has these, these, um, moments of, of aggression. So he, he has self stimming. So he, he, there's one point where he's even hitting himself in the head. Um, he's making kind of strange noises. Um, and and the, the the movie is is really to to not only to um, provide these individuals with life experiences, but also to to get people around the world kind of uh, um, more used to having people like this that, that have differences like this um, participating in the community or being a part of the community, which is great. I think it's a great those are great goals to have um yeah if they had done what they did and just removed the laptops and the letter boards and stuff i think we would have had a wonderful movie yeah i agree inclusion and differences and trying new ways foods. of communicating trying, yeah. yeah cultures yeah. yeah it was interesting because not only were they they were going to cultures that are very different from america they're from vermont right yeah the united states and going to Japan and they went to Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. Norway, where else? Was it those three? I think those are the three main places that they went. Yeah, so they're eating different foods, different cultures, just meeting different all different kinds of different people. Languages. Yeah. Yeah. So schedules so, are different. You know, they yeah. were staying in hotels, they were traveling, you know, um, in by different means, you know, like the whole thing. They went to a, um, a Buddhist Lanka. temple. Oh yeah, they went to a um, Buddhist temple. Yeah, and met with people and. Yep. Really, yeah. really nice. I think that I think that was wonderful that they would be able. I don't know about you, Janice, but watching anybody traveling in this time of COVID <laughs> just kind of surreal. It makes me wanna. Yeah. Excuse me. Makes me to get my hand sanitizer out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It was weird to see people who were walking, you know, so close together and they're hanging out together and everybody was just there right next to you. It's going to take a while to adjust when this is finally over. <laughs> I know it's going to be a, a culture shock, really, to, to go back to, to being around a bunch of people. Yeah. So not, just, not be kind of like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had a hard time watching this, not, uh, but be, because I, I could see what was going on and I had to stop you know, and leave the room, come back. It took, I rented it. It was five, four dollars, I think. On Vidimo, Vin, Vinmo? Vimeo. Vimeo, yeah. yeah. You can find it on YouTube. Also, you can find us a trailer. There was a Wikipedia page. And um, it came out in 2011, right? I believe so, yep. Yeah. yeah, and so you can, you can, I believe the website says you can have it shown at your, you know, they'll, they'll come to your, school or whatever i guess yeah they travel they travel quite a bit and they they go to especially colleges and stuff and and church groups and things like that and show the the movie as a as an inclusion movie as a diversity movie it's actually won awards mm -hmm. um it's quite well acclaimed um that's why it's, it has a wikipedia page you guys not just because it's a movie it's done it's won awards yeah 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 no I mean, I don't know if you want me to talk about some of the, uh, I think we should talk about the producers maybe um, and, and why it, why it kind of sends off red flags. Um, the, there's, there's four main characters too. Um, yeah, tell, the, give us a general idea of who we're looking at and what, set it up. I'll show a trailer and after that, and then maybe people will have a better feeling of. Okay. 
So the, the um, I'll tell you when the movie came out and then I'll talk about a little bit about the who the people are involved in making this happen. Now the movie came out in 2011 and that was just a year after um, facilitated communication um, the, there was a, a facilitated communication institute at Syracuse University, and that was established by Douglas Bicklin in the the um, I think it was around 1990, maybe a little bit earlier than that. Now he was one of the producers on the film, so um, right then you have to kind of decide like who's you know who's putting this movie out, and and so the 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 main promoter in the United States of facilitated communication is one of the producers. Mm -hmm. Now they um, changed the name of the Institute in um, 2010 to um, the Institute on Communication and Inclusion. And the, I have a quote here, um, why they did that. If you look at their, they, they talk about it on their, their current website and they, they say that it was to broaden the scope of the Institute which sounds noble enough, you know, that's great. They, they're including more people and, and more programs, educational programs and research and all that kind of stuff. And if you read just that, you think, wow, that's great. You know, they, they started out with this one technique and now they're broadening their scope. But there's a quote in the New York Times that I found that came out in 2015 and um, says, well, um, another thing I should say is that um, there was so much um, controversy at the beginning of facilitated communication that by 1994-95 the, the, there had been testing that was done and it was largely debunked. It's the facilitators um, anytime there's and this it's one of those occasions where it's, it's very rare to, to, to say absolutely you know and I suppose if you're if you're didactic about it, you can say, well, it's not, I mean, it could work in theory, it could work. But the research is so strong that anytime there's controls put on it, anytime the facilitators aren't included in the test protocol and they participate in double blind testing, it's always the facilitator that's doing the communicating. So it's quite clear um, FC got a bad rap. And, and so the reason why they, um, so this, this quote that I have, um, talks about the name change of facilitated communication and why uh, just a year later they had such a um, good feel good promotional movie promoting facilitated communication but sort of under the radar. Um, meanwhile, because of past scandals, facilitated communication has been quietly rebranded. In 2010, the Facilitated Communication Institute in Syracuse changed its name to the Institute on Communication and Inclusion. We need, this is a quote, we need to do more on FC, but we can't call it that, said John Hussman, a major donor to the Institute who runs a $6 billion mutual fund and whose son uses the technique. He had just given a talk on the neuroscience of what is now often termed supported typing. Um, we have come up with some, uh, we have to come up with some other name to fly under the radar and maintain credibility, he said. So that's a quote from one of the major donors. So just a year before this movie came out, they had a rebranding in, in, at Syracuse University because they were quite aware that, that there was a lot of controversy around the name facilitated communication. Um, and I think it's also another reason why they don't call it facilitated communication in the movie, even though it's a propaganda movie for facilitated communication, in my opinion. Um, and so, um, <clears throat> so that's that's Douglas Bicklin. That's that's one of the producers of the the film. Mm -hmm. um, and then the producer, the other the filmmaker. Sorry, I just have to grab my notes here is um, called Geraldine Wurzberg. And she had met um, Douglas Bicklin a while ago and she actually did uh, another short film called Autism is a World and Educating Peter. And both of those um, films promoted her, her, um, her goal is um, using media for social change. So the, Facilitated communication early on, I think, um, 
started because people were starting to think about inclusion and there were there were um, uh, there were institutions that didn't treat people with disabilities very well that's actually a really it's it's a true and a sad yeah. part of the history of disabilities and i think that's partly why fc was able to take hold a little bit in fact douglas vicklin um he it, it, he never got his degrees in um, communication or psychology or um, any of the things that would set him up to be a communication expert. What his background is in is um, actual um, regional planning and social sciences. So he he regional started planning and social yeah. sciences. Yeah. So he's a social getting, science degree. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you did, yeah. I could open an institution. You could, you could and call yourself a communication expert. There you go. Um, and so he, he, um, one of his interests, uh, like legitimately, I think, I think for most facilitators at the beginning, um, they, they really want to make changes for the good for people with disabilities. Now, I, as they, as they've gone on, the leadership, I have, I have changing views about them, but uh, at let's the beginning, say, let's just say. Let's give everybody the, the benefit of the doubt in terms of starting right. facilitated communication. And he got interested in um, in um, how both um, people who are aging and people with disabilities, how they were treated in institutions. And that's how he kind of came into the field of special education. Um, and well, and he so got, I, he discovered uh, FC from Rosemary. Right. Who right. was Crosley. really involved in institutional, the institutionalized care of a young woman named Annie? Right, right. And so, so that's how they got connected. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think I think the feel good aspect of facilitated communication because you get instant literacy, right, with facilitated communication, and all of a sudden. It appears that these people who um, were unable to communicate in in typically developed ways um, were now able to produce all these sentences and 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 if you look at I took notes on the on the movie but I didn't really um, pay much attention to the to the travel and the music and the you know all that stuff i just looked at the fc messages and it's really quite um a document in terms of promoting um individuals rights to to communicate and and um it it's very clear that the goal of the movie was to to move to make that social change so bicklin together with Wurzarg, Wurzberg, excuse me, um, if that's how you pronounce your last name. Um, it was sort of a, a match made in heaven in some ways because they both had the same goal to promote it. it for for um, Syracuse and facilitated communication, it gave them a way to put together a film that um, felt good and promoted the university in a positive way after, they, after the Institute had gotten so much um, negative press. Um, and then for for the the uh, filmmaker, she was able to um, to put together this this document that that kind of um, uh, it's a fabrication in some ways. Um, it but it it did reflect this desire to to um, move forward and to bring people with disabilities more into the culture, more into the community. And that's true. That's actually still true. I think that's partly why FC still exists today is because as a culture, there are still weaknesses in our ability to give access to everybody, you know, in terms of the appropriate communication techniques to healthcare and education and housing and all that stuff is, is still the, 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 the people that the film talk about are are quite severely debilitated by by autism and and other disabilities um, developmental delays um, 
And so I, I think, I think it's true that the the vision that they have is a is a is a noble one in some ways. But 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 who, because they're using facilitated communication, whose voices are really being heard, and yeah. and how do we know that the messages that are being presented by um, the the um, individuals in the movie that are featured, how do we know that these are their thoughts and not someone else's? So Absolutely. that's where the that's kind of where the red flags come. Yeah, the line from. is drawn whenever when you know, because you see them interacting with people, you can genuinely understand what they're saying as far I mean you can even understand what they're saying. I mean they do speak, which is really odd that they speak and then they're still being forced to go through facilitated communication. Yeah. Strange as heck, but they're if you were interacting with these people, especially like their handlers, the facilitators have been with them like 10 years, they know. They they can they know what they're saying, they know what they're doing. You can you can easily read their expressions about a food they like, they don't like, a place they like. Like when they made when they made um Larry take off his shoes at the Buddhist temple and mm-hmm. he was just like, No, no. <laughs> Yeah, shoes. No, no, put shoes back on. You know, he was really agitated that he had to walk around with his socks on. He, he had two pairs of socks, and he was not happy. I mean, it's clear. Yeah, and, and then they come up with these eloquent, just uh, you know, it's like, oh, come on. Yeah, <laughs> they blame it on his autism. Uh, I think okay. I might even have the. Yes, yeah, good quotes. I think. I don't know if I have that particular one, but anyway, yeah, that, I mean, if that was, I was thinking when I was watching that, um, if that was a, a typically developed person, not a person with disabilities, you'd say, oh, you don't want to take your shoes off. You don't, you just wait for us out here. We can, you know, we're, if you don't want to go into the temple, that's totally fine. But they actually made him. Well, the cameras were there. Yeah, they, they made him go to a place that he didn't want to go. And then afterwards, they have this FC session and says, oh, well, it's it's just my my autism that made me, you know, resist doing that. It's like, no, we didn't want to do it. It was very clear. He was verbally saying, no, I don't want to do this. Also, you know, there was, I was thinking, well, I don't know a lot about autism. So if I'm wrong in this, please correct me. But I think overstimulation is a problem for a lot of people with autism, especially in the, as much as in the form that these two have. And they were putting them in situations where there was banging, banging. Like they went into the temple and they had a big gong and he's like banging up against it and everything. And I thought, this isn't making him comfortable. And they went to um, Japan and he types that he wants to see the lights. Oh my gosh, they take him out on the streets and it is wall to wall like uh like vegas and more it was blinking lights and things i thought this can't be comfortable for these these men you know i that's a they know them better than i do but you know i I thought putting them in uncomfortable situations was kind of what the movie was all about and watch them react i didn't wasn't comfortable to me this yeah i suppose there's some argument to say that that's that's um, those experiences, those life experiences can be beneficial, but you also have to be aware that that may be overstimulating. If, if, if they need a break, then you have to have some sort of out in terms of if you're the chaperone. I mean, you would do that with, I mean, a child. I had to do that yeah. when I was in Vegas. It was sort of like, just find me a quiet spot. <laughs> you know, it's like, let me just, I'm fine. Just give me five minutes <laughs> I mean, away from this from- point. They're from Vermont. Good Lord. Vermont to Japan yeah. to Sri Lanka. I mean, that's not, that's, that's like just, let's find the most unusual place to put these people and drop them into and see how they react. Yeah. It wasn't that's so much that how people react to them because a lot of people they filmed, you know, in the airports and stuff like that would just kind of look at them like, oh, they're just guys, you know everybody's been around something like somebody like that I think it's some yeah. life and yeah. what's there to stare at you know so he's having emotional problems yeah they, they let him have his passport too yeah. <laughs> and the first part when they're taken off at the airport they're like where's his passport I'm like <laughs> he had it though 
Well, true. yeah, they had it in his backpack. And of course they handed it to him to hand to the person at the, at the airport. But I'm thinking, I don't know if I'd be, the guy put his, his luggage down on the, on the thing that goes around with the call, the luggage. Um, the, like the carousel or whatever. Yeah, was. to put his luggage and to put it away. He just put it on there and then walked away. <laughs> that had his passport in well it's 2011 too it's like innocent times back then yeah yeah that's true <laughs> we had two, 2011 i mean 2001 um 9-11 what year was that 2001 wasn't it yeah so yeah. it was they not so innocent to, they still had to go they um the other two two primary um i, I keep wanting to say characters so if this is a documentary it's a real life documentaries right. so they're not characters but the other two players in the in the movie um are pascal chang and harvey leboy and both of those um individuals are quote unquote master trainers from from syracuse university so they were trained they were they went through the first wave of facilitated communication uh, training through D with douglas bicklin and um they established along with bill ash um is another person in vermont they established a, a um, vermont program for facilitated communication and so they they were in on the ground floor of making this a movement um so that's another it's for me it's another red flag that that what we're seeing in the movie is is one-sided there isn't they don't they don't actually talk about the, the downside to using facilitated communication. So, so the whole the whole movie is weighted towards um, making this something that it's not actually. Anyway, so, so that that's another for me that's another red flag in terms of the top four people involved in the movie are all really strong were and still are really strong advocates of facilitated communication one um, of the things i wanted to show everybody really quick because i thought this was interesting is um the uh, website for wretches and jabbers and the um oops let me click click on it and i'll show you something really interesting really quick everybody check this out so if you look at the website and make sure that i'm not giving away anything on here about what i'm going to do for trivia this week <laughs> Can you see the website for riches and jabbers? Yes? Yep. Okay. So here's the website about the film, about the students. Now, if you do, a, so there's quite a bit of text down here. I'm not expecting you guys to read this. I'm just going to make a point. Institute of Communication and Inclusion at, at Syracuse University, Autism Society. So if I do a control F, which is whenever you if you see up here in the corner, if I start to type in the word facilitated, it doesn't show. There's no, there's no word for there. There's, there's no facilitated on this page. Rapid, for rapid prompting method, it's not there. There's no, um, let's see, I'm curious if under the Larry and, um, Larry and Tracy side, let's see if it, they use those words, F-A-C-I. Nope. So the word facilitated does not appear on the website anywhere. It, it may have been um, originally, but recently in particular, they they're removing all traces of facilitated communication, rapid prompting methods. Supported uh, thinking. We could yeah. use the archive.com to look in the Wayback machine. Maybe I'll do that when we show the trailer and see yeah. what it used to say on this website. Because yeah, maybe I don't I don't know. I'm just guessing, but there is, there is a movement now because um, uh, the American Speech Hearing Association and the a couple of the other um, major disability organizations have come out with renewed. Uh, opposition against using rapid prompting method and facilitated mm -hmm. communication. So my guess, since they have a track record of changing the name to suit their needs, my guess is that they are now dropping those terms because now this now they can say, well, we're not using facilitated communication. We're not using rapid prompting method. 
we're just supporting their communication. So they're, they're like, so yeah, I mean, it's back to, you have to look at the facilitate, the assistant behavior. You okay. have to, 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 that's, that's, they're well aware. Oh yeah, and then with the Wikipedia, the awesome Wikipedia page about facilitated communication, that yeah. doesn't help. <laughs> I don't think they want yeah. anybody going there. In fact, the Wikipedia page for Wretches and Jabbers, um, I was reading that. I put that in the the uh, chat for anybody who's who's interested. I'll read you the lead on this. It says it's a 2010 American documentary film. Who is directed by? Uh, the first sentence it says that promotes the scientifically discredited facilitation communication technique and facilitated communication is a hyperlink. So you would go to the Wikipedia page for facilitated communication. This film is about two autistic men, uh, Larry and Tracy, who travel the world helping other autistic people break out of their isolation. It opened in theaters, blah, blah, blah. And then the next paragraph, the film has been criticized by multiple sources for promoting facilitated communication. Skeptical Inquirer claims it is clear that their facilitators are promoting them by touching an arm or shoulder as they type. As a review of the film in USA Today reports, psychology professor James Todd, who we will be talking to hopefully at some point, has agreed with skepticism towards the film by referring to facilitated communication as the single most discredited intervention in the history of developmental disabilities. This is in the lead of the Wretches and Jabbers Wikipedia page, while Howard Shane, who we interviewed a few weeks ago, the Director of Communication Enhancement at Boston's Children's Unit Hospital noted that many people with autism are able to type independently. Accordingly, it is curious that those in this film being facilitated can only create those insightful comments when aided by an assistant. Yeah. Really nice Wikipedia page. Yeah, uh, I something that you know, I get often people will tell me, well, do this paranormal people go back and change your Wikipedia pages after you guys have, you know, added science and critical thinking to it? And I say, almost never. This is a perfect example. You know, if they tried to change this Wikipedia page, I don't think it would last. It, the change would not last. So I've got, a, I actually have an example of um, what Howard was talking about. There's a, there's a scene in the movie with where uh, the, Larry and Tracy are at a conference and they're just they're on a podium and they're presenting they're one of the presenters of the is this in Japan uh, I can't remember it's I, I sorry I didn't write down which conference it was so <coughs> um, Pascal Chang and and Larry Bissonnette type out they type out a sentence and then the um, then they read it to get, and they read it together. So um, facilitators don't believe in double blind testing, but this was the closest that I could see in the movie that, that showed who was able to read and, and understand what part of the message. So these are the words that, that Tracy, uh, uh, sorry, Larry was able to um, read after they had typed out the sentence. So there was a big, it's quite long and I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you the words that he, he was able to read and then I'll, I'll read the whole thing. So he starts off and he says, people move away. And then at the end of it, he says, with ice cold. And then he guesses the B to the end of the word. And then he says beer. And then, then his facilitator, um, kind of gives him a cue and they, then he says Budweiser. So, so he reads people move away and then at the end with ice cold and eventually he says Budweiser. Those are the words that he typed and was able to read on his own, completely on his own. So this is actually the sentence. People move away from psychologically negative space to jovial state of mind with using humor motivation to stay calm and loosening my tension with ice cold Budweiser. Now, what the I hell? didn't catch that. I'm so glad you're watching this with me because I didn't catch that at all. I think I heard it. The yeah. Budweiser comment and people laughed. I think they were in Japan. Yeah. And so oh, I didn't catch that at all. So he yeah. piped that. He typed he the whole thing those words. With, with facilitated communication. He typed the whole thing. 
And then the only part that he could read was people move away. And then at the end with ice cold, and then he need prompting to get the word Budweiser. He could spell it. No, I don't. I mean, he, when, when he typed it, supposedly he's supposedly typing the word Budweiser, right? Right, but but the only so when word, they ask him what does it say, he couldn't. He knew it started with a B, and that's the a, only thing that he understood was people move away, and then with ice cold. That's the only part that he got on his own. Wow. So there's another part where he um, actually speaks, and let me see if I can find it. I'm, I should have notated this better, but. So, oh, he says now he's painting. There's a part where he actually has the ability to paint. He's he's got his painting Artist, and, yeah. and stuff, and so he can paint with a paintbrush and his fingers and be very you know manipulate the the medium that he's working with. And he says now, good job, all done. Now that to me, that's spoken by himself, and that to me. Um, kind of equals the words that he was able to read. So he probably is able to speak and read and and write in, on a limited basis at a basic level, maybe further in there. Just guessing, but you know, that kind Just of- Just from that. what we can see. Mm -hmm. Yep, so, so his spoken language and the few words that he was able to read in that paragraph seem to match, but there's no way that he understood from psychology, I don't even understand it. From psychologically negative space to jovial state of mind with using humor motivation to stay calm and loosening my tension with ice cold Budweiser. I mean, people don't talk like that. They, I mean, they don't, you know? Maybe from Vermont so, they do. <laughs> maybe, maybe. You're, close enough, you're Vermont. closer to Vermont than I am. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's that kind of, that kind of, you know, like, when you see him, he's he talks to his sister. He he makes coffee. He um, unpacks his his suitcase by himself. He's shaving. Like all those motor skills that they say that the one of the the things about facilitated communication is they need the the physical support because they don't have the motor skills to type on their own. So you need a you need to be able to isolate at least one finger and and move your arm forward to touch keys on the keyboard. And they're saying that he doesn't have the motor skills to do that. He needs, he needs. Total, it's a total government. insult and disrespect of this man. They've taken yeah. his voice. Yeah. He has so, communication. It's obvious. It's right there. He's an artist. He can cook. He can interact with people. He takes people's pictures with a camera. He also directs them. He would, there was a woman that was holding up her hands, like a peace sign and said, don't do that. And he, 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 he actually, made his wishes known in terms of posing his the person he was taking um told her where to stand and, and not to not to put her hand up like that and he, he was using a polaroid so he was able to to focus the camera click it and then take the take the film out you know the picture out he put it in his pocket I and mean, he has all those fine motor skills gross and fine motor skills mm -hmm. that uh, so why can't he type on his own? There's no, like, just looking at him as an example, there's no reason why he can't type. And he can type on his own, you know, but it's not going to be at the level that they, you know, these flowery messages that they, they, it just, it just burns me up, you know. Just, <laughs> my dad used to say that all the time. That's so cute. Burns me, burns up. me up. Oh my God. Burns me up. Burns me up. But there's, you know, it, it's exactly right. And the, what they're doing is they're, they're, using this man or both of the men for to promote this facilitated communication that they're not even mentioning in their institution yeah i mean i found another example where um one of the one of the guidelines for for deciding whether fc works or not is idiosyncratic language so you know like strange language structures and stuff and that's that supposedly is to tell you tell you that the communications are independent and so he says, let's, let's say I haven't changed plentifully autistic in my behavior, but getting more motivated to understand autism is the world. You would not venture out reporting this 30 years ago. So that plentifully autistic in my behavior, that's the kind of thing that, that 
the facilitator is like, I never would speak like that. So it must be. <laughs> and neither know, would the person I'm facilitating. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But they don't. Even if they are from Vermont. Vermont. Yeah. So I like her in Vermont, that's... you guys. I'm not putting down. I haven't been there. <laughs> I have very good friends in them. Ireland that are in Vermont right now and other people I know that I would love to come and visit you in, in Vermont. Nothing against Vermont, but it is not. It's a hotbed for facilitated communication. Yeah, though. there you go. Uh, yeah, so so that's the kind of, I wanted to point that out because uh, sometimes it's hard to find examples of, of like real facilitated communication. I can give examples off the top of my head, but that is actually one of the sentences that he told he supposedly typed out that um doesn't make sense and like the word order is is strange and and that's that's a result that isn't a result of because people people with autism who aren't using facilitated communication but can speak or write and type independently mm -hmm. don't talk like that so this isn't this isn't the language of people with autism. This is the language of people being influenced by facilitators. We're going to show some screenshots too that Janice has has made that show how the she's got a close up of the screen and shows the preemptive text, how it's the computer is doing some of the work for them as well. So sometimes you know you might start typing a word, and maybe the facilitator just says, "Yeah, that's it." <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. And it wasn't the word that they meant to type in the first place, but it sounds good. So let's just Well and they call it poetry if it's if it's oh, too yeah, it's poetry. Oh it's poetry. We can write a book. Um, and yeah, and we... people in this movie do. Documentary yeah. do. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um let's see, before we get to the trailer. Um, I thought the moments afterwards where they did sit down and facilitate were probably the better moments for these people because it'll calm situation where they're sitting with them calmly after a lot of stimulation and wherever they took them to and it was yes facilitation with the laptop and all that is ridiculous and confining but it probably felt like it was something a little normal to them and, and maybe it was a calming moment for them to be able to um to have with that they probably need a lot more of <laughs> Yeah, I agree. For the most part, there's, there is one part where Tracy and Harvey Lavoie are um, facilitating. They're in the, in the airport, I think, or in the hotel lobby. I can't, I can't tell where they were. And Tracy's overstimulating. He's actually um, stimming. He's hitting himself in the head. Yeah. Bad boy, he, bad boy, bad boy, I think he's saying. Boy vocalizing. So um, supposedly while he's doing all that, this is what he's, um, Harvey Lavoie grabs his arm and he's quite quite aggressive with it i mean like he's holding him like this mm -hmm. that's not a that's not a light touch to the, <laughs> no. the hand. um and this is supposedly when he's banging his head and doing that he's he, this is what he types out i think that we are big time movers making a difference in the lives of people that can't talk but are intelligent that's not what he was thinking i'm sorry but he was <laughs> he was really upset and, and the move, what the movie wants you to think, because they, they talk about um, Tracy's aggression quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I think what the, the movie wants you to think is that he's upset because he can't get his words out. Like it, yeah. Only, yeah. And he's only um, satisfied when he's, when he's facilitating. We've seen that in other, other videos of other people typing for their children. The child gets very upset and angry, bites their hands and things like that. And then they type out something eloquent and, and then the eloquent will say, I'm just frustrated with, I can't get my words out or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm I don't inside. think that's what was going on there. Yeah. I'm locked inside. And they, I mean, I don't know why he was, he was upset. It, you couldn't really tell from the situation. Well, the time were, zones are different. You know, his whole schedule's off. Yeah, I mean, they, that, they hadn't had breakfast yet, so maybe he, maybe that actually was actually true that he needed something to eat. He was, you know, crashing or whatever that that happens, but you can't really tell, and you don't know. And and the the behavior of the facilitator in that was quite distressing because he's he his motivation wasn't to calm um, Tracy down. He, he kept saying, you know, if you if you type it out, you'll feel better. 
and and that's the result was I think we're big time movers and that's not um it was so disassociated from Tracy's actions that it, for me the red flags were going off it's like uh, there's no way that that um he was saying that there was another part where he was saying um if I can find it um he was saying hurry up hurry up hurry up he was verbally saying it and he was tight supposedly what he was typing at the same time was i've always been very angry about my autism i didn't get seen as intelligent until i was out of high school well this there uh, i asked around to a bunch of people and they said can you can you say something and type something completely different at the same time <laughs> another thing i missed good job janice <laughs> yeah I didn't catch that at all. Yeah, no, and they were like, I can't, I can't even listen to a podcast or a movie or something. Nothing. If I'm trying to, I mean, if I'm typing just a little tiny sentence, yeah, but. <laughs> no, and see the, With one the, finger. the trainer, the facilitators train you to, um, to, to give more weight to the typed messages than to what they're saying vocally. And so, which is just the opposite, you know, it's like, it's just, it's just a little nuts to me. It, it, absolutely. I am. Um, I was also thinking about, I don't know if the word ethics is correctly used here, but bringing people with issues of aggression and lashing out and really loud yelling onto a plane for how many hours from Vermont to, well, of course they'd, they'd have to go to Vermont to another place and then getting on that place to Sri Lanka or to Norway. I mean, they did show him on the plane and Tracy's got the window seat and he's got his earphones on and he's sleeping. And uh, his, his trainer or handler, Harvey, kind of looks at him like, oh, what a sweet baby, he's asleep. That's really nice. But I thought, that's an awful long flight for somebody who is in a tiny little confined space. And maybe he doesn't quite understand where they're going and what they're doing and how long they're going to be in a plane. And I don't know. I just felt like, I, think I, I don't know. I think that's what makes this so complicated because you, you, don't, you don't want to prevent people from having experiences but where do you draw that line when you when you know when you're risking them being overstimulated or confused or upset and and that's actually what's causing the the distress and not not something else you know right. what I mean so like watching, people watching it will say oh it was fine see they were fine but it's like anything dealing with psychics we're only seeing what we see what they choose to have us see we don't see a meltdown on the plane we don't see yeah. Um, over, you know, the constant overstimulation. We don't see um, him hitting some strange woman in the in the you know that happened to be get too close to him. How? No, it's just I don't know. We don't see it, so we think yeah. that it's all fine and everything's wonderful. But this is not a documentary to show both sides, as you said. This is a documentary to completely support um, what we see. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange. I, you know, it brings up a lot more questions, I think, than it answers. Really interesting. Uh, let me look at my notes again. Uh, let's see. I was surprised at all the different communication devices they took with them. They had laptops. They had, it looked like um, some of the other people they meet in other countries are using smaller like Canon or like smaller devices. Uh, and even at one point, they brought out a letter board for, for Tracy or for um, Larry to use. I thought, a letter board? And then there's a woman off to the side from Japan and she's writing down what he says, the letters yeah, as they're being read out. And I thought, we're using a letter board now? Why don't you just ask Larry what he wants? Why, why do we have to, why, no, why are you typing, why are you standing there with a letter board in the air, in the air, thank you, in the air, <laughs> with somebody over here with a pen and paper, why don't we just ask the guy? Right. 
<laughs> well, the, other, the other thing about that scene was when she was writing her it was obviously english was a second i'm, I'm assuming english was oh, yeah, a second yeah. because her hand she had was, to translate was like, things that yeah. great i had to go back and watch that because at first i thought they were showing what larry was writing on his own oh. but it wasn't she was the one that was writing she was dictating and or she was taking down what he was supposedly typing so yeah. yeah, that was that whole thing was weird. I I don't I'm not really sure why they we were. I don't doing know it. if Larry can actually write with a pen and paper, but he it can paint. Go on the, yeah, no, I don't so know if if he can read. I mean, it might be crude writing. I don't know. But why don't you just hand him the paper and the pen and write? We know, we know if that he can know. write and spell. He should be able to do it with a, and he can paint and he can eat and he can do all these things. Yeah. It's, it's likely what he would be able to write, the extent of what he would be able to write, he'd be able to say. It's not like he'd be able to write, you know, hundreds of words that he didn't actually know how to say. So, so it would just be used, not that, not that he shouldn't learn to write, I think he should. Um, but I, I think that as a, as a, on a trip, if you're relying on communication, then, then his, his vocal, um, ability and his nonverbal ability is enough to get the basic. You could tell whether he was happy or not happy or didn't oh, want yeah. to see Absolutely. you. Know, the, Maybe he, the laptop he, battery died and that's why they had to pull out the laptop. Uh, the possibly. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. It's like, where did that come from, man? That's like the 1980s or something. I don't know about that. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, it, it's having a, a pen and paper they've been working with this these these this couple for 10 years you would think that they would have taught them how to use a pen or pencil and paper to write out enough words that would be more than enough to communicate what they what their wishes are and what they're trying to express yeah it seems that their use of of the the facilitation is is taking away from maximizing what they can do on their yeah, own. You think? <laughs> That's my opinion. Uh, it's my opinion too that maybe if they had spent ten years doing something a little more constructive, these people would have a little happier lives of some yeah. sort. I, I I don't know. I was just wondering. To me, and this is my opinion, I was wondering if Tracy was sedated in that plane. Just saying. Well, yeah, I don't know. How are you going to get him across? What? How many hours is that? They do. They do make kind of a big deal about um, how aggressive he can be. So I don't. I. I don't know that. I mean that. And that's just that's in the. They. They do some scenes where they kind of give you an idea of of Tracy's background and and also in some of the facilitated stuff that he types. They talk about him being aggressive. So it's it's possible that that medication could be used to, to keep some of those. Um, Cause I, I, I just, I'm not, I'm not buying it. Sorry. I've been, I've flown to Norway. That is not, and I'm in California. So no, it's not a quick, easy flight. That the, Oh, the sound of the pans in the background is Mark Edward on pans in the kitchen. <laughs> oh dear. Um, <laughs> An example of when um, Tracy was able to read and the same kind of thing that I did with Larry too. Um, Tracy was able to read yes, sorting through a, and then there's a, there's a phrase and then was a nightmare mom could to that. Those are the words that, that Tracy could read on his own. And this is the sentence. Yes, sorting through a teenage hormonal autism was a nightmare. Mom could attest to that. She also and, gave him up at the age of eight. He went to an institution when he was eight. And he I think how much he missed his sister. That's the that's the hard part about autism. That 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 there's a neurodiversity movement that would like to normalize autism, and there are there's a wide range of symptoms. Um, of people with autism and and part of part of that community can be very aggressive and and there's no like sometimes you can tell 
what might set them off, but there may not be an indication. They just may start um, being aggressive for no obvious reason from somebody looking on. I mean, I think maybe the person with disabilities may or may not have a reason, but, but they're, they, I think it can be very difficult for parents to, to raise people with autism that, that have severe, the, on the severe end of autism. And that's, that's something that the neurodiversity movement, there's, there's um, an argument going on now where they seem to just want to erase that whole part of the population. They want, they want like people like that are um, in these movies and going on the college circuit and stuff. They want those people to be featured and they don't want to talk about the difficulties of raising a person with right. severe autism. He could have, we don't know, he could have been abusive to his sister in a way that was really harmful. We don't know the social economic, um, I mean, maybe the mother was a single mother and she had to work and where are you going to put your child? You know, there's all kinds of uh, reasons. And also it was 30 years, 40 years ago when it was a different kind of world. And, um, you know, things didn't exist the way they did, but he was sent away at the age of eight. He says that. And yeah. he, but eventually is reconciled with his sister because she does appear in the show, but he stays with her a day or two a week. And I didn't understand this, except that, you know, you're trying to explain to me that he has, he's, he can be very uh, violent at times, apparently acts out, but he has to move. He's in a different house, living in a different bedroom yeah. every couple of days. And I, yeah. and at the end of the movie, they said he does not, he still has no permanent place to live. I, I didn't understand that at all. I don't. That was, I don't, I don't know why they weren't able, you, you would think if they were, um, they cared enough about to have him travel the world with them, that they would be really advocating very hard to find him a permanent place to be. And, and that, that was really kind of disturbing when they started talking about that. He, he'd moved, to, sometimes he ends up, he said in a facility for people in crisis. Yeah, and, what was that? Yeah, and they they leave that largely unexplained. And I, I kind of I looked around a little bit, but I wasn't able to in the time that I had. I wasn't able to find what his status is now. I certainly hope that they used their their fame, whatever. If you know, like didn't they to, get money for this? I think they well. Did it Part go to of, them or did it go to the institution? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who got the All money. All the money. <laughs> I, I was wondering about that. Why does he have to move every couple of days? I can't imagine that being healthy for his mental state to constantly be uprooted and put in a different, and they showed him moving to a different, here he is in a new bedroom. They were all nice, clean bedrooms in different places. Yeah. And some of them had personal items in him so it's like he rotates between these homes and but like you said sometimes he's had to go into homes for crisis and he types which means that he's not typing the facilitator is saying that one of the things he'd like to do is find a permanent home yeah. uh, that that was important to him and he did go to the vermont senator senator or was it the governor yeah the senator he's really worried about disability yeah. rights and uh you know losing his losing the money that supports him which I can see he needs somebody to be there for him 24 seven. You know, he might not need constant care, but um, he seems to be able to take care of himself, you know, dress and shave. Yeah, and it's like a, it looked like he could he'd live in a supervised situation. Maybe with a couple other people, but he was, um, you know, and I, another thing that bugged me, well, it bugged me a lot is when they meet up with this woman in, in Norway, um, and, you know, they have almost no interaction with any of the people they're with. They, they have to be prompted to high five. They don't make eye contact. Um, there doesn't seem to be any, any interest in the other persons that they meet that are also um, autistic. But yet, on, they sit down at these tables, everybody with their laptops and their facilitator, and then they start typing, we should join together and we should be 
fighting against these, you know, the right, you know, get rights for everybody. And, and, and then the facilitator will read out, here's what Tracy just said. And then somebody on the other side of the table says, you know, they're typing, well, here's what, here's what uh, 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 Larry just said. And they're, and they're typing and it's like, they're having this conversation with each other because yeah, well, the facilitators are. Well, the people with disabilities that are sitting around the- are They're like, the what time do we go to dinner? <laughs> what time do we get another beer? And, yeah. and, and Tracy's like telling the woman in Norway, will you come to Norway? I mean, will you come to Vermont? Yeah. And she's like, I have to ask my mom. And then he says, well, your mom's right there. And she says, well, I'll talk to her this weekend. I'll get back to you. This is all over typing. Yeah. So it looked like he was trying to hook up with this, this, this yeah. woman. Yeah. He had no interaction with her, no eye contact, no nothing at any point that we see. But then it looks like he's trying to hit up on her. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, he wants, her, he wants her to come to Vermont, huh? Yeah. She doesn't speak English. Or does she? She speaks, right? She had a job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get to those two characters in a minute. I, yeah. I don't know. Let me see about my notes before we wait, wait one more time. So when you when you watch this trailer, we'll just show you a little bit, two minutes, thirty three seconds, and hopefully it doesn't lag too much. But also uh, we have some screenshots to show you, Janice took that shows exactly what we're talking about. We wanted to set this up before we got here. Uh, before we got to the trailer, you were going to see some other people from other countries, Norway, Sweden, um, and uh, not Sweden, Norway, Japan, and Sri Lanka, who they go to meet there, like, and to attend an autism conference. And those students are people who also have autism, who are using facilitated communication also. And pay attention to the music. I, I talk about this a lot whenever I'm reviewing um, psychic uh, videos, anything that has to do with psychics. They cue you with the music cue. Here's the type moment to get emotional. You know, they, it's cued in there for a reason. They do attend autism conferences. I'm really curious about what you think about these autism conferences. And all the shots, you know, they kind of downplay the use of the parent cueing them in a lot of these shots. But you'll see it when we point them out to you. Yeah. And that reminded of just one thing at the conference. Uh -huh. At the conference, what was the first thing you wanted to say when you when you learned how to type? And this is um, this is Tracy who can speak, and he says, "Oh, it types. Oh boy, a great question. I told my mother that I loved her. She cried." I think really he would have said, "Is give me another beer." There's a lot of beer in this movie. Larry likes the Budweiser. He likes, he likes to drink. And McDonald's. Good kids. <laughs> well, which shows they like consistency. Yeah. You know, I want to have my food exactly the same as I have my food every day. I'm a little like this too. And I want my, my drink to always taste this way. And, and when you go out of that little area, it gets uncomfortable. And I'm not sure that they wanted to be made uncomfortable by finding new experiences. I felt like somebody else wanted them to be. It wasn't, it wasn't their choice is what I'm trying to say. Not all of it. No, sure. I don't think so. Okay, so let's pull this up. We have two minutes, 33 seconds. Let me share the screen. Optimize screen share, share computer sound. That's what I'd forgotten to do in the past. So here we go. So hopefully they, everybody can hear that. And this is Professor Campieri, the mind. My name is Larry Bissnett. I heard that you traveled around the world, but what is the purpose of this world tour you're doing? To do people does. It's a Boise to die, possibly pray. What would be the one thing that you would want people to understand about you? 
I was so excited to hear that the film was actually going to happen. I had brainstormed the film idea, and here we are. So any questions of Larry or me? I'd like to know uh, what it means to you to have autism. I was trapped in a body that didn't work right I was and not be able to let people know. People all want communication. Hello. Hey, Larry. I think we should go for a run right now. I gotta, Hello. I'm going to set up the computer here. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you are um, telling us that our assumptions are wrong. Or like you watching on Facebook was that choppy? We'll see. There's still people there. I had a little bit of delay on mine, but not bad. So I thought this movie moved so slowly, which is really hard to watch. It was an hour and 30 minutes or something like that. And it just I know I had to stop and, and walk around and do other things in between it, but boy only hung up once randy says look great paul in this says a little bit but not bad yeah okay good yep. thanks you guys i i, I want to show these trailers are important to be able to have you guys have a feeling of what's going on too but all right you can see, um in the trailer the woman with red hair when they actually was in the trailer meeting Tracy Thresher, who's the, supposedly they had a thing, and she, she he came running towards her and she like that. and moved away from. Yeah, she was quite startled. Um, that was in Vermont. Uh, was it? They come to Vermont. It, uh, yeah. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was in Denmark. I don't think they. I think it, I, uh, Norway. I, I mean, think no, it was. I think it was afterwards. I think they come to Vermont at the very end of the movie. Oh, okay. To attend a, to attend a, a, a something uh -huh. in a convention of facilitating communication. Okay. Which reminds me, a, a lot of these characters uh, or these individuals in this um, documentary are featured on a, um, there's a university in Cal Luth in California named Cal Lutheran, and they have a rapid prompting method program there, quite active. And a lot of these individuals are featured on their promotion for their their program at Cal Lutheran. Just throwing that out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sorry, sunshine for me. <laughs> All right, I thought one of the main themes of this whole film was that they these two Tracy and Larry were rescued by facilitated communication. It, any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, it's quite clear. They, they spend a little bit of time giving a, um, a biography of both Tracy and Larry, and both of them are um, portrayed as people who were kind of lost in the system and, and were, were rescued, but saved by typing in a way. Mm -hmm. And then they meet another person from um, named Chammy, I think that's how they say his name, C-H-A-M-M-I, and he and his mom are, are facilitating, and they talk the about- one in Sri Lanka? I think so, yep, and um, they talk about how people with autism are, are outcasts, 
and again, the typing saved them from being these outcasts. So yes, it's, there's a very strong theme of that in the movie. And, and, and they may well have been rescued, but I think our point would be that anybody who would have been given really good attention at whatever stage without the typing probably would have been felt like they were rescued as well. Right. Just had, had good services, social services, attention, um, something to assist them, maybe yeah. besides their mom, give their mom a break, um, all that. Um, that's, why, that's why this is, this topic is so complicated because there are, at times, there are uh, like threads of truth that run through it. And, and that's, I think that's what keep people who are kind of on the borderline of FC, does it work, does it not work? that's what they're struggling in their heads. Like to me, I've fallen over the edge in terms of FC doesn't work, but I know there are people that are kind of in the middle and they're like, but what if it, what if it, you know, what if it does work? What if we take that away and they're not able to have these experiences or that kind of thing? I think that, I think, I think it, the, the, the movie, the movie plays on those kinds of emotions. And I think they're really real for people. I think that's why it's so popular because it feels so good that these people were rescued. Absolutely. And what horrible people Janice and Susan are for, for pointing out these horrible things and taking, we're just these awful ableists and is that the word? Ableists? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Keep up on this. Totally story. against people with disabilities. Yeah. Uh, it's just awful. Okay. Somebody will cut that out and use it as a quote. We're ableists. <laughs> Join the long queue of people who hate Susan Gerbic, all right? Line forms at the back. Yeah, I'm uh, a bad facilitator in workshops, so what can I do? Do the handlers believe that they are not the communicators? What do you think? Pasquale and um, Harvey. That's what they say. I think that they, and, and we can, I think, I think what they buy into is the idea that they've faded supposedly, although in practice, um, if you watch the film, particularly with Lair, with um, Harvey Lavoie, he actually holds um, Tracy's Tracy hands by two hands to facilitate, and he often has like a death grip on his arm. So I don't know how I don't know how he rationalizes that he's fading support during that time, but. They, they convince themselves that if you hold a person by the shirt, that you're not able to control their typing. But what, you, what the heck? What, what, what would be the point of holding somebody's shirt? I mean, why would they say, this person who can act independently on their own, paint, go order coffee, drink a beer, travel, carry their own luggage and passport and so on. Why do I need to hold his shirt yeah. when he's typing? Why, why do I need to hold it? What? That doesn't make sense at all. And how can they justify that in their brains? How can Pasquale and Harvey say, I must be sitting right next to them holding their hand or their shirt or something for them to type? I can't, I can't even imagine why they, where, where they rationalize that in their brains. No. And call it independent. It's like those commercials, like the medicine commercials where they, with a, with a you know, at the end, they're like, um, so it's like independent communication with support by the arm and, and shoulder. And well, just sitting right next to them and they're holding their shirt. And yeah. I mean, after 10 years, if this is independence of some sort and fading, where would they look like 10 years ago? Probably pretty close to the same. Yes, and, and now- Or more resisting. And 10 years later, they're still doing it. Well, they, they've developed some sort of passivity towards that. Yeah, they're like, okay, I gotta sit here and do this. Yeah, and, and I, um, I caught, I caught both facilitators. These are master trainers from Syracuse University facilitating with their client when both of them, one had their eyes shut and the other one wasn't looking at. We got some screenshots of that. That's in, <laughs> in the movie. You so know, I have, I have a look in the movie. Yeah. Which they chose to edit the way they want to choose. Why did they, I, I've, I've, I keep wondering about that. We're not having to do a sting. It's already there. And they thought that was good. That's the best they have. 
Can you imagine what they threw on the editing floor? Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> And then there's two, there's two moms who are very camera savvy. You have to kind of look very closely. And one of them, one of them's sitting by her son and she kind of sneaks her hand down to the side of the chair. So she's, she's yanking on, him, on his shirt, which gives him cues about when to move forward, which side of the keyboard to move to, mm -hmm. when the keyboard and not. Mm -hmm. And all those cues can be done very subtly. And that's what she's doing with his uh, on the side of her shirt. But it's the camera angle. They made the camera angle so that you're mostly focused on the computer and the young man. And you, I mean, it. I mean, I was looking for for cues. I don't. If I had not been looking for the cues, I wouldn't have seen it because it was so subtle. She just like, and she's at the beach too with them, and they're the way they're they're standing. She's got the keyboard here in the air in the air in the air and her hand is underneath but down below so you're you're the focus of the camera shot is up here oh and gosh janice that's another one i miss i should watch the movie again but i don't think it's i could a, <laughs> a screenshot of that i did get a screenshot of that but um let me so that's kind of, to use as you know, we go if they know that they're not influenced you know supposedly they're not influencing the communications then why do they have to be so sneaky about it you know, that that's one question that I have. Um, but then Pascal and Harvey Lavoie aren't sneaky at all. I mean, Harvey Lavoie grabs, grabs it. Oh, the other thing is he's, he's going like this, like had this really long arm movement when he's typing. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know if you can hunt and peck and bring your arm way back to your shoulder and then down and still know where the heck you're supposed to be typing. Maybe he expected that to be taken out of the, um you know removed from from the shot let's 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 go some screenshots here let me pull up okay let's pull up this first one with the mom facilitating at the beach okay let me pull that up so, oh i see what you're seeing now i missed that let me get over to screen share i only have two screens you guys but boy is this everything just jumps behind each other and i have to find this screen share and all that stuff again screen share a screen share is next to stop a recording. Zoom has got to move some of the controls over as far as I'm concerned. Okay, okay can you so, see? Yeah, so this is one where the mom, if you look down below on his shirt, yeah. Right here. You can see, and, and she, not only is she holding the keyboard in the air, so she's also moving the keyboard to match where, it's, where she wants his finger to land. She's also giving him cues about whether to move forward or which side of the board to move to or not. Okay, here's another one. Let me zoom in a little bit. So this is this is tricky to hear to see, but his arm is under his right. Yeah, it would be his right arm is the one that's cueing his son. But the camera shot makes it look like he is typing independently. So you're saying this arm right here of the father. Yep, is underneath probably on the thigh. Yeah. Another shot of it. Yeah. Or even underneath the shirt, but you can't see it with that. There it is. Yeah. So it's right here. So if you're if you've got that position on somebody's arm, there's no way that you're not gonna be able to you can't you can't do that and not influence how the person types. It, I don't know. Maybe it's just this screenshot, but this hand looks so loosely, like just very loosely hanging on there. Yeah like he's just barely he's the weight is on here and he's just barely like having it out there and look how intently dad is yeah look how he's looking at that that screen it is an intent um if you, if you look at their fingers touching the keys too i wonder like they're so like you said they're so loose like if you're typing on your own your hands are kind of stiff and you're pressing down on those buttons but if you're just like kind of touching Mm -hmm. your fingers would be very loose so i sometimes wonder if there's even you know if they're even participating i and that keyboard is so small i have a feeling you'd have to hit those buttons quite you know not with a very light touch to get them to to read i would think you'd have to push that quite hard because this is the kind of thing you fold up and um 
That looks like a Canon communicator with a screen that would type out the letter. So why don't they just give the kid the 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 Canon communicator and let him type out what he wants? Well, I guess they want to have this in portable in his pocket or something. Here's another. This is uh, this is a uh, Larry and Pascal. Pascal. And, and he's see. holding onto his shirt. Which and they, they they will say you you're, they're not queuing they faded the the um, the claim with facilitated communication is that you can fade support so the person is typing independently but he's he's got his um, fingers on that shirt and if you're if the facilitator is touching them and in, in, in some cases even when they're not mm -hmm. they're so cued into each other that little movements from the facilitator cue the, per, the person with disabilities. Yeah, they, they worked together for a very long time um, practicing, I guess you might say. Oh, this is a really good example of Larry not liking the computer. Yeah, um, but look, Chang is, Chang's looking at the computer. Oh, he's, he's like, I am still someone knowing God's value. He has an apostrophe on there too. Look at that. Pascal's really looking, but Larry is definitely, looking over here somewhere not and and it's again it looks like his hand is just kind of loosely there just kind of you know weak just supported by this pascal's hand here let's see what else we see here's another here's mom where's her hand where's her oh look there's her hand yeah and where is he looking as he's typing. <laughs> uh, what's over there? <laughs> and mom is looking at the keyboard. Let's, yeah. Let's see. I mean, maybe these people can type independently, but uh, these are red flags that, that really cause concern in terms of looking at it and wondering who is actually doing the typing. Larry again, looking over here. Here's here's this uh handler yeah uh, that's that's uh, naoki he's got a film out called the reason i jump and the uh, but the mom the mom um has her hand down by his lap on his leg and then here's the woman in the background taking uh i guess she's taking notes before she was doing um she was at that at the temple transcribing yeah, yeah. Here's this one's in this. So that was Japan. Here's Norway having their session. What's this back here? <laughs> Is she just cuddling up to her daughter? Something tells me that she's um, queuing. Here's Larry again. Seems to be looking down to the side. Maybe he's got a better eye on this side. He's actually looking with one eye, but not the other. Well, they claim that that the people with autism have really good peripheral vision, and that's how they can type without looking at the keyboard. Right. But that can be tested, you know. Here's here's mom. I think this is her hand back here for this guy. And what is this? Is he holding his hand? It's in motion. And they're having a conversation with each other. Somebody types, and everybody else reads it out. Yeah, that's the strange part. It's the adults that are the um, people with speaking ability that are interacting and not the people with disabilities. Again, here it is with Larry looking off to the side. Now, maybe like it is, like I said, maybe he has a good eye and a bad eye. I think there his eyes do. And oh, and look here. And look at this in motion. He's moving quite fast as he's got his hand on his elbow. Yeah, I don't know. Like he has a really wide range of of motion when he's typing and it's like that that to me i think it would be really difficult even with the hunt and peck method you'd want your hand to be pretty close to the keyboard yeah it's just, it's just like a just uh i don't know like a chopping of a wood yeah Here's hand again but if you're just watching this movie you're not really looking for um facilitator influence you may miss some of this stuff that's why you know it's good to point it out because they're really sneaky here is another one coming up hopefully 
quickly. That's the A-N-T-T-I, Antis, facilitator. Now that one, that one was interesting because they showed him using traditional um, picture exchange and then they, they, they made a big deal about saying, well, that's too bait, like kind of, that's too babyish for you. Don't they know that you can read? And so they're actually um, uh, criticizing traditional evidence-based communication methods in lieu of facilitated communication. Mm -hmm. So this is what I was talking about is that where they would sit after an event or something, they would sit around and they would chat, I guess. And I felt like this felt like some sort of normalcy probably for, for them in an overstimulation kind of, you know, you're probably overstimulated. Here's again, the hand in motion, it must be moving very fast. Everything else is fairly crisp, but this is blurred because he's moving so quickly and you can see his hand here. I think he's got his eyes closed too. Yeah. That. Oh, here's a better look of uh, Larry. Again, he has that where he looks to the side with this eye and maybe that's looking down. It's hard to say, but he's, Pascal's very intent on what's being said. Same with mom over here, hand on his, on his lap. Um, let me see if I see any more. Oh, um, Again, he's looking here. Even even if he had like one good eye, the, say his right eye was better than his left eye, he's still not in a position to look at that screen well. He's only in a position to see the edge of the screen with his right eye, if that's his only good eye. look at all eye. that context that's on the screen already. Earning. Learning opportunities seem dependent on people Something the system I've with, hmm. And here's this. Here's the facilitator. Um, this is at the office of the senator. The senator is like, okay, I'm here for my photo shoot. I better be very, very careful because there's a camera on me. Well, I say anything. I find it interesting that he participated in this movie and i also find it interesting that he's now governor and fc is promoted at the state level of oh that's really interesting i don't think i knew that look look at how he's uh harvey is really intent on what's being said why can't harvey just look off to the side why can't he read a book over here somewhere <laughs> why does he need to look at the screen what is what is the purpose of his um why, you know, I just, I don't understand that. Here's again, well, there's a lot I don't understand. Here's another, his hands blurred again. Sunglasses on, I guess he's typing right there. To move people's knowledge, again with the apostrophe. Who's doing the watching? Why doesn't he have his glasses on? Um, here is Harvey again with oh, a death grip. Is, look, look, look at that. This, this is, is he's trying to say he wants to eat. I think he said he wanted to go eat. Yeah. But look at the grip that Harvey has on him. I mean, that's that's not the way I would. Changing on the hand. Yeah. That's a that's a he's imprinted on that person's arm. Mm -hmm. Is this the same shot? No, it's a little different same time he's got a full grip on this on on his, uh, Tracy's hand his well, Tracy has his eyes closed this is when he was having his um temp his tantrum he was he was really upset I think they just arrived at the hotel yeah and he was hitting his head and and vocalizing and you know stimming and stuff and and uh this is with him how high he gets his hand in the air whatever he's um yeah He's pulling back that that far. I would think even even if FC worked, I would think that that would be really bad technique. This is two handed yeah, two facilitated hand. communication. At least the laptop's on the ground this time. Yeah, <laughs> which is interesting. So you now some of these other kids, I don't know much about them, and you, you almost feel like maybe they 
aren't, maybe they can read and write. Mom, right here, her hand is probably down here under the table. This one was the most confusing, but a lot of the, the text that was translated was in a different language. So I couldn't really tell whether it was matching what, you know, whether his spoken language was matching the written language. Here he is. But here, yeah. Look, here's the hand. But again, in the air. There's a table right here. Set it down and let him type. Or just give him the pad and let him type on his own. Yeah. Why are you having to stand so close? The mother got quite emotional when the film was over. She was crying that, uh, you know, that they were leaving. And then here, this child who needs help, look what he's able to do. I don't know how to say his name. N-A-O-K-I. Naoki, I think. Naoki. Look. This is in painting. Look at the detail. Mom sitting next to him again, but she's not cueing him. No, he's he's working. Look. He really is working independently. Now, why does she need to hold his uh, shirt or hand or whatever? If he could do that kind of detail, he can he can be on his own. Um, almost done showing you these, you guys. There's a couple others. Let me see. Here again, hand moving very quickly. Larry again looking off to the side. Here's the letter board. Look at all this text. How long do you think it took for him to sit here and do this? <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I think they'd probably rather take a nap or something. His eyes are closed. It looks closed, it looks squinty. What do you guys think? He does that quite often. And he's looking at something in the sky, but at least he's not typing at the moment. But he's looking, finally not at the, at the sign. Wow. I don't know. They just, I, I don't know. Maybe they're typing independently, but it looks like the, the facilitators are, are influencing them in some ways. You can't touch a person or be that close to somebody without... I, the other day, just as an experiment, I took, a, I took some marbles and I put them on a plate <laughs> and I tried to hold the plate still in the air without the marbles moving around. And you can't, I, can, I could do it while I was concentrating, but if I would looked up or I started talking or anything, those marbles would move <laughs> all over the place. That's so a, it's, a it's like, like holding a, a communication board in the air. So you could, you, if, you, if the facilitator concentrates really hard for a minute, a second, they can get that board exactly still in the air. But as soon as their attention is somewhere else, if they're asking and answering questions and stuff, having a conversation, reacting to what's going on in the environment, that board is gonna be moving around. It's in, in the same thing. So if they're holding the board in the air or if they're holding the person's shoulder, the shirt at the shoulder or holding them on their back or on their leg or whatever, they're, as soon as their attention is somewhere else, they're not gonna realize that they're, they're actually moving the person's hand. And then they're gonna convince themselves that they aren't influencing the communication because that's what they tell themselves it's only the bad facilitators oh, they will, God. Like, God. The, uh, there's a um douglas bicklin had to testify in court on a court case and he's the he's the leader of fc in the united states and he even said in court testimony that that there's facilitator influence on 20 to 40 percent of the the facilitation that you know like so what 60 to 80 percent of typed messages are we supposed to believe them that's my question it's mm -hmm. sort of like it and andy said um the facilitators are aware of it and they're they're um it said in the in the there was a typo it said they were weary instead of wary of it and i'm like no i'm weary, I'm weary. of this topic <laughs> Let me ask you a question. In, in reviewing the movie, can you think of any time where they're typing and there wasn't somebody sitting right close to them? Any no. incidents? No, and I looked at it really closely because I only, and in fact, I didn't, I didn't watch a lot of the movie really. I watched only when they were um, facilitating and there was no time that they were typing. Not that I caught. 
I've never, um, I never saw a single moment when there was not somebody sitting right there. Yep. And I found many times where there would have a laptop or a, some sort of communication device and there's a perfectly good table within a few feet of them, but they pulled it out and had them, they were holding it and they were typing. And I thought, put it on the table right behind you. Just, it's, it's, it's a nice solid surface and walk away. Go get a beer for Larry, you know? <laughs> Go, go take some more pictures somewhere. Yeah, let or, them do it. They're not going to, you know, just let them type. And then when you come back, you can read what they typed. Yes. It's right there on the screen. Yeah. Why, why do you have to stay there the whole time with them? You Because then it's not assisted communication. It's not supported typing. It's oh, not. Well, I did to let them eventually fade away from it. So let them fade. Just let them do it. Would you not trust have- them? But then they don't have these magical moments of language. Well, that's what I mean. Okay, so Pasquale and Harvey, do you not ever allow them to sit there at the keyboard while you go to the bathroom or walk over there to see who's at the door or to get a drink of water and come back and see what they've written and it's gibberish? Yeah, I don't know. We show that for the camera, but they, or they hadn't typed anything at all. They've wandered off and gotten themselves a cookie or something. Yeah, no, I'd be. I I haven't seen these these um, individuals in action, so I've only seen the movie. So I, I would be curious. They have they have conferences, FC conferences at Syracuse University uh, twice a year. I'd love to be able to go and just see what happens. You have mom behind the scenes, just standing standing behind without able to make a motion or a sound and just like with their hands visible and just walking away or something or on the other side. So Wendy, Wendy Hughes, hello, Wendy, love seeing you here. She says, is there any insurance or do other disabilities benefit that pays the facilitator? And then she's also asking, do insurance companies have any investigation into these FC claims? Well, um, in Vermont, we know for sure we have a document from, from one of the, from one of the individuals at the government level that say they do allow um, Medicaid funds for facilitated communication. In fact, the um, designated agencies there, the, the state run agencies, some of them use facilitated communication actively. And we know that even a couple of years ago, uh, I haven't been for this year, this year has been kind of wacky. I haven't really kept up with oh, Vermont that much. But, yeah, I know it's just me that thinks this year's wacky. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you're doing but, um, like a weird 2020. <laughs> yeah, but the designated, we know for sure that the designated, there are some of the designated agencies that actively promote and hire people to use facilitated communication for a state run program. So um, I think the figure was something like $50,000 for two positions. Um, I think it was fifty-four thousand dollars. We saw like, one ad. Yeah, yeah. fifty-four thousand. That's a lot of money. I more than money than I ever made. Yeah, I think it was for two two facilitators. They actively train them and and use facilitated communication. So we approached the um, the Medicaid and oh, didn't get any answer. They're they're supporting it at the state level in in Vermont. Now other places, I'm not really sure. Uh, Syracuse, the state level, I mean, in New York, the state level Department of Health Services does not support facilitated communication. So I think it's on an individual basis. It would be interesting to to look at California. They've got another, um, I'm doing a talk for the, the skeptics group in California. So I started looking into California this week and they have six of the Syracuse master trainers in that state. So it would be interesting to know at the state level what they support and what they don't support. Yeah. So I do. I know that it's happening. There's also uh, I've seen documents that um, the facilitators are are talking to each other. A reporter sent me some information, and um, they they don't use facilitated communication or the term rapid prompting method when they're designing their um, IEPs or asking for funding. So they, they use an alternative, they just call it 
you know, they call it augmented and alternative communication. So they kind of slip under the radar in terms of um, uh, funding for speech services or occupational That's services. That's odd. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, who's going to look into it? I mean, the thing is that it, it affects such a small group of people. It, the, the, I'm willing to close their eyes and it seems to that's what that, mm -hmm. yeah i don't know i don't know how else to explain why people just kind of turn and look the other way i think that the within the autism community there's only a percentage of people that use facilitated communication so the numbers in the whole scheme of things are, are fairly small to me it it seems like a big deal because i spend so much time with this topic but but in the whole scheme of things i think that you know, people uh, in in a way that the FC promoters are right. They're they're the people with autism or other severe dif disabilities aren't treated in a way that puts them in a priority position. If if it was a priority, FC would have been stopped in the mid 1900s, uh, 1900s. <laughs> <laughs> 1995, 94, 95. There was enough evidence then to stop it and it still is around. So I think that's one of the problems is that it's not a priority for people. They're, will they're willing to look the other way. I'm just being myself. I was thinking of that, um, that woman who reached out to us, the mother who reached out to us not too long ago on YouTube after one of these videos was up. And I don't know if I really wanna go and do her video and talk about what's going on with there, but I guess I can mention uh, what she does is she, she has a son uh, that she's facilitating with and she has the keyboard or she has a letter board like, like this. She holds it like this. And what she does is she puts it up against his stomach, like, like the edge to his stomach. And so the boy, does this thing but what you can see in the videos is she's going like this you know she's she's squeezing it a little bit so it so the letters are easier for him to get and also she pushes into his stomach a little bit and pulls out from his stomach so if his hand's just in one spot as she pushes in the letter gets closer or farther away and in the video so she's asking us so what about this and the kid gives this real complicated, you know, answer about uh, how he's adjusting to COVID or so, I don't know, something like that. And she's like, see, see? And I'm like, you're moving the letter board. Why are mm -hmm. you using a letter board? Why are you holding it in the air? She's like, I'm not holding it in the air. I'm balancing against his stomach. Yeah. I said, well, you're clearly moving it forward and back and side to side. How can you not see that? I am not. Or no, didn't she say, I kind of have to? So I said, you're moving it so he can get to the top row of the letter board or away. She goes, I think she said something about it makes it easier for him or something. I, I'm like, cognitive dissidence. Of, yeah, it is. It is. You, you, the thing is, you can see her yeah. moving it. And she's can, like, no, I'm not. Or that's just the way you're supposed to do it. And I'm steadying it on his stomach. I'm like, well, it moves. There is a counter. You're in the kitchen. Set it on the counter. <laughs> I walk away, put yeah. a typewriter there. No. no, then it wouldn't be assisted communication. I mean that we, there's a, there's a study coming out and, and, um, yeah. about eye tracking using eye tracking technology. And we asked, we asked the, the writers, the authors of this study, why they were holding the board in the air, you know, wouldn't it be more independent, you know, wouldn't the eye tracking be more accurate if the board wasn't moving in the air if it was stationary and they said but then it wouldn't be assisted communication so they've got this circular reasoning and and i can speak from my experience is that if you're a facilitator you're so convinced that you're doing it right and every it's it's everybody else that's doing it wrong when there's a criticism that you convince yourself that that's true and it it, it really truly is easier to to admit anyway that mistakes are being made by someone else and not oh, yourself. Oh, there's a book about that. Yeah, yeah, which is really good. That actually is a really good book. 
yeah an amazing book she's such a wonderful person and she makes great black um um blueberry muffins right wendy <laughs> we, we went to her kitchen and had, and had um, cookies and blueberry muffins i believe one time um, nice. yeah she's really a sweet person uh autism conferences really interested in this i don't think those were autism uh facilitated communication conferences they were autism conferences we don't see any again it's carefully you know they show what we want to show i don't see any criticism i mean if, if you go to an autism conference right now and you say we're using this method there's gonna be blowback because the autism community isn't 100 percent behind this no it isn't but i don't know how confrontational people are in person so if if somebody showed up like uh when we looked at the conference that was happening in the university of northern iowa mm -hmm. that wasn't just about facilitated communication although a lot of it a lot of it was the some of the present presenters and they showed deej the movie and that kind of thing but but when we first started coming up with the idea of writing letter that was our first target so to speak was the university of northern iowa with with you know this kind of group that we have uh, there was some pushback i got some pushback about well you shouldn't criticize the whole conference you should should only criticize that aspect of it and so people would were showing up to that i'm also in contact with the parent that goes to that those conferences and there it's sort of like this not so secret acceptance of facilitated communication and that, that that's just a that's just a fringe element in the community and so i don't know they maybe just don't go to that presentation or whatever but they, they i don't know how much confrontation there is in person kind of makes you wonder why would they allow something like that to continue knowing that it taints the entire conference yeah i i think like a science conference that allows a flat earth you know here's oh we're going to have the science conference on astronomy astronomy and going to the moon Oh, and over here we have a flat earther conference, you know, that's all your or lecture that's all pro uh, flat earth. Yeah, I it's the whole thing look incredible. I've thought a lot about that. I don't know. This is just just me thinking aloud mostly, but it there seems to be there's a there's a thread with the proponent literature about being rejected you know the 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 world it's us against them kind of thing and i i don't know if the if the autism groups they all kind of have that feel even even the more um uh even the people that are integrated a little bit more into the rate the typical community than others like they're less disabled by autism even they kind of feel like it's us against them in some ways you know and and i don't know if they can if it feels like a rejection if they say this doesn't work you can't come if you use facilitated communication that's rejecting people in their own community that have already been rejected a lot and I, so I, I i think they sort of have this reluctant acceptance of it for now until people can you know, or, or maybe maybe they just say, well, they they're such hardcore believers. Even any kind of reason isn't going to work with them, so we'll just accept them for what they are. I don't really know the reasons. This is me just. Yes, I would be an interesting fly in the wall. I also was thinking, like Wendy said about money. Um, I don't know how pro prevalent this is, but there are some of the parents that have um, children that are are. Um, using fc are quite wealthy yep um some of them they've adopted children and they knew that they adopted a child with autism and possibly i assume um, yeah and there is huge amounts of money that they are throwing at these conferences and support because if so then you know they truly believe their child's communicating through facilitated communication there's nothing you can say or 
to those people that make him change their mind. They will never question it. And Janice and I totally believe um, that they're not going to, we don't aim to that. And I think that there's a lot of money. So these conferences may not happen if the facilitated part didn't show up because maybe it's sponsored by a, a parent, mm -hmm. a, a big donor. Um, and the other thing is, even though it's not the person with disabilities, it's not their voice. I'd really like to know what autism is like for those people. Um, they do have some sort of voice. You know, they're much more active. They've gotten the attention of people in terms of diversity and inclusion and all those big hot button issues, and disability rights. And they're, they are vocal in, in that respect, even though even though it's, I don't believe it's coming from the people with disabilities, uh, they do have, they do have that, the attention mm -hmm. of universities like Syracuse, that's why they're, that's, that's what you, Syracuse will say is that we're pro, you know, disability rights. And that's why we support facilitated communication or Cal Lutheran or uh, University of Virginia. That, that's why Oberlin College let some individuals graduate or at least one that we know of graduate using facilitated communication because it's all that you know like like feel good we're including people we're you know all that kind emotional of they don't want the backlash either completely forgetting that there is harm in this and they don't seem to get that part of it they they'd rather not go there Wendy asks another question she says do autistic people ever learn language without FC do they ever without without the facilitated communication that we're talking about she says do autistic people ever learn language without facilitated communication so maybe she means do they ever get to a point where they can well she's saying autistic people in general do they well, yeah, they they learn to type and they learn to communicate to, to, to the ability um, and so if they have usually some sort of intervention. Yeah, if they have intervention, there there are all kinds of low and high tech um, methods to teach people how to communicate. Um, we talked with Howard Shane, you know, they, there's like all kinds of um, devices and methods and stuff that are that that allow people to learn language. In, in um, if the question is, do they ever like if they're using facilitated communication and they move beyond facilitated communication? I don't think that's um, it, but that but that is an interesting question. I think they yeah, no, that that we don't know because those people we don't um, they've never been tested. <clears throat> So we don't know how much, how many, how, what their skills were before. I mean, there's the claim that people have graduated, quote, you know, kind of graduated from facilitated communication. Um, no, the, 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 I would say most people with autism that have the ability to learn language, learn it without facilitated communication. There are individuals because of the autism who never developed that's one of the that's one of the signs of, of real severe autism is that they never have the ability to learn spoken language. Um, and there and there I think there are studies now to try to see if they're if they're locked in. You know, there's a there's another whole theory about they're kind of just locked in and can you can you reach those people? Um, Catherine Beals kind of talks about that. And there are there are methods being developed to try to answer that question, but yeah, no, I think most people with autism learn without facilitated communication. Yeah, so uh, Wendy says, I am guess what I'm asking is what happens if they never had FC? And I think, like you said, it just depends on how severe it is and what kind of other interventions they've had. And you probably see these people all the time. You don't just don't notice that they you know they they function as they function and as Jana said she's clearly saying spoken language these a lot of people they're all communicating right you now even if the communication is grunts or pointing or 
grabbing you and pulling you towards an object or there's people communicate you know yeah. even unless you're in a coma i guess they're they're fine ways of, of making their wishes known yeah they and, um yeah, like if you learn take to adapt or figure it out or some sort of intervention to make it to find find um tune it so that it's a little more maybe expand the range of, of their communication yeah now i've it's been a long time since i've taught um so i'm out of it but when when um we talked to howard one of the things that he said was um, access is sometimes still a problem for people and the amount of therapy that you know speech therapy they might get or the consistency of the programs so that's all going to affect um and and when you when you reach somebody if you reach somebody say and it sounds like in in larry bissonette's case or or harvey's case they they were in schools and not really Tracy, yeah, sorry. Um, Tracy, it sounds like they were kind of maybe in an institutionalized or a program that, that wasn't really strongly suited to their particular skills. So if you reach somebody later, then if they never had facilitated communication, just from what we saw in the movie, you can expect that they would have some degree of spoken language. You could, they, there were indications that they could read um at least at a basic level they they had some sight words um and and some it just the way that larry was sounding out budweiser he had the ability to to some understanding of phonetics Phonics, of who yeah. the b was a you know what the b sounded like when he saw it and that kind of thing um he would maybe just have stayed at at the level well actually he probably because he hasn't had any training for a number of years besides facilitated communication, it's even possible that he could have been even stronger in his in his communication abilities. That's what I think. But but he's been he's there's no there's no um, like Catherine talked about this um, uh, joint attention um, that's needed to learn language and to learn literacy skills and that does not exist with facilitated communication and so all the time that they're on the board they're not learning they're not learning they're not strengthening their skills they're just they're just doing this rote like a crutch kind of movement or in tracy's case <laughs> yeah yeah like this it looks yeah. like like this i mean how can you how can that be typing think about that how could you how could you take your keyboard and put it down and, and go like this let's see how fast you can type and how, with what accuracy when we're what we're uh, what i'm seeing when i look at these videos is that what facilitators seem to be doing is teaching people how to point on cue yep. whether it's a traditional facilitated communication where where somebody holds the other person's hand or rapid prompting method, a lot of people are fooled by that because the facilitator is holding the board in the air and the person looks like they're pointing, you know, I guess technically well, they just, are pointing they are independently. Kind of Nobody's touching them, but they still are being cued. And so they're they're not being taught um, phonetics, they're not being taught spelling, they're not being taught language structure, they're being taught how to point on cue. And so that that whole piece is missing when facilitated communication is used. So I don't know if every person, you know, what what there's there's a range of skills that people have, but if you introduce facilitated communication, then you're definitely um, if not stopping their learning altogether you're you're strongly um slowing it down i have i i we're, we're nearing the end i guess we should be ending soon uh, wendy asked a really good question but i want to um kind of make this point before we go um i was thinking how much uh, just imagine how much better this this video this documentary would have been if they had left the keyboards at home and just brought them along and were uh, listen to what they said and when they said no you stopped um, 
when they're uncomfortable with the situation, you maybe found a different way of in, introducing it if you really wanted to, to do something. Um, I think that letting the world know that people uh, with autism or you know, however, in at least in these two individuals, Larry and Tracy, uh, working with them, I think that maybe there was a lot for the world to learn and for the students yes. to be able to interact with them. But the, 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 the keyboard and the facilitated communication was, I felt was really wrong. I don't think that, I think a lot of time has been wasted trying to teach these students to, uh, these people to facilitate. And as you said, I, I really don't think that, I think they'd be a lot farther along in their social skills, their um, ability to communicate than, you know, working to this ideal that these, that somebody has, that they should, they're just locked in and they just have trouble communicating without having somebody holding onto their shirt. Um, oh, and, and one more money angle is, is that they write poetry, they do circuits, they, they travel. So they are receiving money. Um, so having your son become a poet might, and producing books might be another way of, uh, um, you know, financing this. The questions I ask, and I want to make sure the audience thinks this, thinks about this as we go. Um, are these men legally competent? Are they, do they have a caretaker? Do they have a conservatory? I think that would be the, the ultimate question. If, if these, if these men, Tracy and Larry, can they vote? Can they hold a bank account? Can they make choices about marriage or medical decisions on their own with a facilitator or not? Could you, could, are they competent by, by all standards of competency we have in the United States? Because if they're able to type and with such eloquence that we see there on the, uh, on the typewriter, and the facilitator saying, these are the genuine words and look how eloquent they are that they can go to high school and graduate from high school. Well, could they testify in court? Well, even if it wasn't against somebody because we know that they can't, that it's been thrown out in many cases um, when there's been an accusation, but let's say they saw an accident. Could you bring them in and say, what did you see? And, and then they type it out. I mean. So if they have a conservator, if they have, uh, if they're unable to make these legal decisions about themselves and their life around them, then they probably, then they're not uh, communicating because it's, it's one or the other. They're either locked in and they can communicate and think perfectly fine in their head and they just have motor problems and they act out and they scream and they make funny noises and they spin around and jump up and down and that's the autism speaking but inside they're 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 authors and they're you know brilliant and so if that's true then those people should be able to have full access to everything that is that I have and Janice has and everybody else watching on Facebook has and YouTube you should be able to vote. You should be able to make decisions about finances. You should be able to make medical decisions about your parents or whomever. And, and Wendy asked this really good question that I asked, what happens to these people when their parents die? Yeah, I know. It hasn't been around that long, facilitated communication, that we've seen instances of, of you know, the people dying. I assume it passes to... I don't know what what do you think will happen to like Deej and well they've got tons of money so I'm sure they'll just hire somebody to continue working with them but how how would you do that no it would totally depend on the support system I the, mean they're probably the, going to a home of some sort because you know little sister little brother who's with them do you think they're going to want to raise their it's been devote their life to that maybe yeah no I know you're it's you're building dependence. I mean, they're already dependent on the people around them and you're building another layer of dependence on top of that. So and, oh, and what, if, yeah. what if mom is the only one that believes in FC in the family and is the only one that communicates with that person through FC? The you know, child would be free. I think he'd be free. 
<laughs> to be able to do what he wants to do. I mean, if he wants to roll around on the grass or if he wants to watch video games, if he wants to eat, he'll be able to do that. I think, I think it would be liberating because I feel like FC is like a prison uh, that these people's, their voices have completely been taken away from them. I, I almost, I don't know if this is going to be a popular thing to say, but it's almost Munchausen's by proxy. That the parent is getting this attention, their child's getting this attention. Hey, look at my child. Look, mm -hmm. he's, you know, but kind of the opposite. So uh, Brandy has, okay, I haven't read this yet. So let's see. She says, Susan, maybe this is a dumb question. No, there are no dumb, no dumb questions. questions. Susan has made me wonder, has anyone tried testing this by showing the person with autism a picture in a room where they saw the facilitator isn't then asking them to type out what they saw? Yes. And that's yes. what happened with uh, Janice and in some other cases. And anytime it's happened where the facilitator sees one thing and the other person sees another thing, it's a fail. It's always based on what the facilitator sees and not always. the person with disability. Yeah, so Janice, Janice was tested and that's why she's in the situation that that she's in mm -hmm. um that is she fine. is she was yeah. and there's yeah. a video on it brandy too the um no i think that's a great question and and, and makes a lot of sense the the proponent viewpoint is that people you're supposed to presume competence so you're not supposed to test anybody and that's built in right from the very beginning of facilitated communication. And so it's a lot like psychics say that, you know, it doesn't work if there's a skeptic in the room, that kind of thing. And um, that's how it's gotten as far as it. These, these people um, that are successful, quote unquote, successful with facilitated communication wouldn't do the kind of testing that you're suggesting. No testing's allowed. And any time that there has been situations, whether it's been false allegations of abuse or just people wondering, what is it? You know, especially early on, people were wondering, well, what is it that we're seeing here? We better test this and make sure we're, that what we're seeing is actually what's happening. And they set up these tests um, double blind tests and, and, and it's one of those situations where it's not just like this fluke that you get a result. It's like every time there's been controls put into place and whether you're testing 11 people or, or um, 30 people or whatever, it always is, is the facilitator influence. It's, it's very, very clear what this is. And it's not, it, it's kind of confusing because the, the facilitators aren't always conscious of their role in it. Um, although I, I, I do think that they do understand at some level that they're the ones that are moving the hands, but you're, tr you're sort of trained not to think about that. So they're, they're all the way through the literature, there's, there's um, recognition by the critics of facilitated communication that most of the facilitators are well-intentioned, but they're wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's basically the bottom line. Yeah. Um, Carmen so. says, gave me three ding, ding, dings. She thinks that it is related to Munchausen's. Uh, Paula. Interesting, said, I've never heard that before. And I, I'm gonna throw that out. I, I actually have um, contact with a bunch of people. I'm gonna throw that out. It's kind of like an opposite where they're saying, not that my child is so sick, but it's kind of like they're, well, you know what I mean. It's, it's yeah. That idea that my child is special and look at him and I don't know the whole, the whole, anyway, you, I, I've I'm seen curious. It, I've seen it as like a savior complex on the facilitator's part. And so they're, you know, it's, they're, they're so convinced that they're out to save the world, you know, out to save their child that they can't see anything else. It's a very, I'd say that it's a pretty narcissistic kind of, and I say this about myself, um, narcissistic mindset to have is that it's everybody, you're convinced that you're the only one that that person trusts to, to communicate. I think they're groomed to, mm -hmm. to be in this mindset and that they now, especially um, people go to facilitated communication as the technique of last resort. So they're primed to make this work because if this doesn't work, That's then they have to admit that their child 
can't communicate at the level that they want them to. Yeah, like a normal go to school kind of, you know, tell me about your, tell me about the kids in the class and what was your day like and, you and know. Some mm-hmm. people just can't do that. That's that's the reality. Is like there are some. Oh, get over it, mom. You know, um, Paula says has a British facilitator with an American client suddenly had the American spelling words like color, favorite, or use UK, UTK terms like lift. I assume regional accents will affect what the client says if the client changes facilitators. Well, they don't change facilitators very often, and um, I know that there was one one student. Sometimes, now this is what I've heard, sometimes the parent has their child in school and is not told that their child is going to be undergoing this facilitated communication. It's something they say, hey, let's try this with your child. And the parent's like, well, sure, okay, whatever. And not really knowing, they don't use the words facilitated communication or anything like that. It's just another technique. We're going to try this other technique. We're going to try this thing. And the parents aren't aware. And, um, I've heard of this happening many times, and I remember one where a parent, the Hispanic child, you know, coloring and eyes and everything else, went in and was facilitating with a Spanish-speaking facilitator, fully fully speaking in Spanish when typing. Yeah. And the parent found out and said, wait a minute, why does he know Spanish? We don't speak Spanish at home. Yeah. You no, know, we're, we're, you know... We don't, we don't, nobody here speaks Spanish. So why does he speak Spanish? And he only spoke Spanish with that one facilitator. When he went to the other facilitator who didn't speak Spanish, he spoke, he typed in English again. So the parent's like, wait a minute. I think, wasn't there some video or something where the parent goes to the, goes to the uh, the administration and they have like a meeting and, and the mother's like, I don't get this. Why are we, why are you doing this to my child? He does not speak Spanish. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I'm not I swear that where I saw that somewhere. Yeah. No, I believe it would be you. on one of facilitated communicators page. It would be on a, like a science <laughs> kind of somebody yeah. playing it. But the, yeah. the thing is people are raising really good questions about this, but what I need to make sure you guys understand, they're not testing. This is not, you're not, once they figured out that when you test, there's a problem, all testing's off the plate. No yep. testing is allowed. If you even suggest testing, you are an ableist and you are shutting, you're, 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 they're losing confidence. You're, you're shutting down their self-esteem. We're going to go back a year or two and my poor child is going to be so traumatized by you say, saying, challenging her, her abilities. How dare you? We're out of here. You horrible, horrible person. You, how dare you suggest that we test my child? People have gotten death threats over this. Oh yeah. yeah. See if you if you criticize the technique of FC, which is I think is, and you're criticizing the person with indiv- with disabilities. That's that's in the facilitator's mind. So, yeah, you're yeah. not allowed to test because if you tested, you would find there is nothing there. And I think in the back of their mind, they kind of know that. And it's just like with psychics. Oh, I wonder if I wanted to make sure I got this in. So uh, um, one of my Facebook friends, she is um, found me because of the articles I've written a lot about uh, with uh, psychics and stuff like that. So she's been been telling me a lot about this uh, psychic she's been following for a long time. No, no, not a psychic, the mother. So this situation, I haven't talked about this before. So this is this mother, her son died, um, killed himself with a shotgun. Okay, she's on Facebook. I don't really want to mention her name. She's she's a medical doctor. Her and her husband have more money than you could imagine. They have homes all over. They've got tons and tons of money. So when her son died, and she talks about, I guess in the past, she's talked a lot about this child having uh, bipolar and um, lots of things going on with him. So he kills himself. The mother finds him. The mother quits her job. And she gets into, and psychics caught on that she has a lot of money. And so there's a pool of psychic mediums that are channeling this kid. This has been, I don't know, he's been dead like 15 years, something like that. And so they all are channeling him. They're collaborating on the story that this child is saying, let's, I know his real name, but let's use Steve. They're saying, Steve is communicating with me today. 
And the mother is paying four to $700 an hour to communicate with Steve. Steve is giving her love you mom, love, love, love. And Steve is going around and he's solving mysteries, missing children's stories, some of them over 40 years old. Steve is telling him all this philosophy about the world and how, you know, this. So these mediums are bilking this mother out of all this money. She's got it. And so she's charging people um, to watch her videos and she's really pushing because she wants to bring some money in. I, I think there's been a lot of tension between the husband and the wife. <laughs> because of so much money is going out for all these mediums. And yeah. I watched a couple of the mediums and they're just like, they're with their eyes closed. Oh, and Eric, um, Steve says this and, and Steve says that. And oh, and he has this vision of this and there's this dog. It's just made up, you know? But you know that the other mediums are all kind of staying on the same page. And if they get some discrepancy about what happened with Steve, then they just say, oh, it's an interpretation. I must have interpreted it wrong. But the mother fully believes it. She's been doing this for years. She's got a YouTube channel. She's got a Facebook page. And any criticism on that page is wiped off. And, and people attack. Sounds people. like facilitators. It sounds just like facilitators. And this mother is buying into it. Can you imagine? She's got the money to do it. So, of course, she can do it. But check it out. What's been happening? <laughs> oh, my God. The mother is in Texas. Oh, and she's starting to do classes. So she's starting to do this herself. She says she's going to start channeling Steve herself. Okay. We'll see if the mediums allow her to do that. Uh, I don't think so, because I have a dry up their income really quickly. They keep discouraging her. She opens portals for people. She's like, donate today. And the top donor, the top donor, not like a random person chosen, the top donor will have their portals closed. I will open and close the portals in your house today, whatever that means. I don't know what that means. But that's what she'll do. So she's in Texas and she's very pro Trump. Okay, very pro Trump. So the mother started posting on her Facebook pages very pro Trump stuff. And all of a sudden, her believers, these followers, she's got thousands of followers, are like, what? Trump's a, you know, anti Trump, just, and then there's these pro Trump people on her page and they're like, Rah! So now the fans are battling. I was reading through the threads. It's incredible. They're just battling each other. Like just the worst, nastiest things are saying about each other. And it's, it's escalated into a feeding frenzy. And it's really interesting because they're starting to see the, that, you know, before they had this common belief in this, in this uh, Steve and his, and his stuff. So now they're at each other's throats and it's starting to like lose its uh, function. And they're like, I can't believe she's a Trump supporter. That's horrible. I'm out of here, you know? And the others are, it's just, I just seen this in the last couple of days, my friend pointed it out to me and I'm like, oh, this is, this is like, get the popcorn out. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just, but that's what I mean within the facilitating communication uh, world. Can you imagine if one of like if Pascal was a Trump supporter and really a favorite, you know, really into it. And then here's Harvey, like, I can't stand Trump. And then you'd have then Tracy and Larry would be going at each other about they would be like, well, Tracy says that he likes uh, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Biden. He loves Bernie. And well, they're just, you know, you know, neo-Nazi socialists and they're like, <laughs> that might be the end of facilitating communication. That would be nice. <laughs> I'll just get involved. <laughs> well, they do believe in psychics too. There's a there's a faction of FC that believes that it's not the communications are are um, are psychic. Yeah, we've got to talk the, about that because the <laughs> because the client <laughs> and the facilitator like understand. I'm not laughing. So well. laughing. I'm just laughing at the absurdity of it, you guys. James Randi was called in to test the to test the psychic abilities of some people using FC because the 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 um, facilitators were so moved that the the they could almost just think what the what the person with disabilities was going to say. Oh wow, they could think what the <laughs> so, was going to be. Tight. So, yeah, so James Randi was like, "Well, 
why don't we test the FC first and then see if the psychic abilities exist afterwards? And they're like, oh, we don't want to anymore. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> We'll we'll have uh we'll pay for your taxi to the airport. Uh, pretty much, yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> they pretty much fired him. Yeah. The um, yeah. So we we got to talk about the psyche connection. That I remember the woman who wrote the book. Um, she was really into psychics and crystals and all that stuff, and she, her her child has written many books using the facilitator. And after a while, they don't have to hold their hand anymore. <laughs> they just. They just, she's telling me this. Here, let me type it. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> really. She told me all that. She told me all that. And yeah. then, the, and then they, I'd love if you could find, if it'd be great if you could find the video, if there's a video of people facilitating uh, with somebody who's blind. They did, uh, they did in, in one of the. Um... Is there a video of that? I don't know. I'll look. Because that would be gold. It was. It's in one of the controlled test Not studies. Not the facilitator, but the person who's being facilitated is apparently blind. blind. Yeah, and FC worked with that person. I'll try to. I'll look it up, and I'll see. I'll see if I can figure it out. I don't know. I, I don't. Oh it, my goodness! It was early on, so I doubt there's a video. But I'll see if I'll see if I can uh, track it. Oh down. my goodness, you guys! Yeah, you know what I'd really like to find out is what has happened to these people years later, because a lot of these videos, some of them we're finding from 2010 and stuff, and there are some that are recentish. You know, um, the woman I mentioned who's facilitating on her son's stomach, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, they're being told not to put videos up because people can then see through the technique and so they're they're being told by leadership you think that would be in their mind they tell me not to put a video up because people will make fun of it or something or yeah or maybe see that i'm faking yeah but we've got like deeds the deeds movie and stuff and that's why we're starting to look at some of these movies because you can just see the same arguments are still there and these are the best these are the stars of, of the community. And the and best of their audio, their video too. You can look at the Deej trailer and within 13 seconds, you can see they're using facilitated communication. You know, even, even if they don't call it that. It's, it's so. sad, you guys. It is so sad. All right. So um, again, Janice and I, do you want to just mention what we're going to be doing uh, next week? Oh, um, we were approached by um, Tatiana Elsef. She's a speech language pathologist, and she she has a, a channel that she runs about evidence based um, issues with speech language, the speech language community. And she asked if we could put a panel together to talk about facilitated communication. So we have Susan Garbick, and Ooh, we have, I know her. I know her too. Um, <laughs> how really. Think? imposter syndrome being on this panel tell him yeah. be there who else is there howard shane mm -hmm. uh james todd uh stuart vice um who am i forgetting uh catherine beals and um brian gorman and if you don't know them they are um howard's the uh, the director of the communication department in boston. in boston children's hospital and, and he's a associate professor at harvard worked with um, stephen james, hawking yeah he worked with stephen hawking um james todd is a psychologist at um michigan eastern michigan university and he has not only has he um studied facilitated communication for a really long time he's been expert witness at a lot of the high profile facilitated communication trials. So is Howard. Um, Stuart Weiss is a writer and a psychologist and he has um, studied FC for a really long time and written about it um, as a, as a, you know, from his perspective. He's a good friend too. Um, as pseudoscience. He's a uh, fellow of uh, scientific uh, committee of skeptical organizations that I am, psychop. Yep. And um, Catherine Beals is a, is a linguist professor and she has a child with um, autism and she's developed a communication method to work with people with autism that's um, computer-based. 
And Brian Gorman is a, he's a psychologist and he's also a lawyer. He's a professor at Towson University and he, um, he has studied facilitated communication from the, a legal aspect and what happens when people use a discredited technique in the classroom. So it should be a really interesting, I hope I didn't forget anybody. Um, it's a, a, it's a, gonna be a really interesting conversation, I think. Yeah, yeah I'm It'll just gonna in the corner and go, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just in charge of handling some questions about pseudoscience. I'm like, all right, I can talk about the pseudoscience angle of this, but I don't have a degree and I feel really kind of silly being here. No, you understand a lot more about it than, than most people just because you've been hanging around with me. Oh, yeah, we've been hanging out together for a while. But so so that's happening Wednesday? Wednesday. Next it's Wednesday. It's going to be, yep, it's um, on YouTube. 4 right? p.m. East, no, 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we'll try to we'll put a post. We'll put, we'll put links all over because this should be a lot of fun to see all these people at one time. And, um, uh, that, and Janice and I will probably do more talks. Uh, I know I've got a list of things we still got to talk about. And then I'll put together some more talks with other people. I just have put my feelers out there to all these people. I want to talk to you. And they're like, yeah, that's great. Let's talk. And I'm like, okay, well, when are you available? I'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we got to get that done. Yeah, we've got a list for FC people, but the the um, universities just started opening up. So everybody this week and probably yeah, next week. There's a lot going on, you guys. So I have another article coming out in Skeptical Inquirer that will be about Thomas John. And that should be out in a couple of days. There's one that was just released yesterday with the psychic that I had seen that it did a Facebook live reading with me. That Her name is Ray. Um, what else should I mention? Oh, um, Tuesdays we do... Here on Facebook, we we put a note. Um, we have an Australian prediction project that you guys should join us. We're we're evaluating psychic claims from the last twenty years from Australia. This is Richard Saunders from the Skeptic Zone. He has been. He's got every prediction made by an Australian for twenty years. Well, it's not twenty twenty isn't finished yet, but he's got all of them, and he's got thousands. So he's got to go through on a giant spreadsheet and he has to go through and evaluate each claim that a psychic makes. And boy, I know so much about uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, Nicole Kidman, uh, Mar Mariah Carroll, all those, you know, who were they married to and when did they have a baby? What was their, because this is what the psychics may, mainly do is predictions yeah. about uh, celebrities. So we have to evaluate it. Did Leonardo DiCaprio get married? Did he break up with this person? I don't know who half of these people are, but we got to sit there and look at it and go, well, it shows that he was, you know, he didn't get married. So I think the claim is wrong because he's never been married and it predicted that, you know, and with the queen, this and that, a lot of it is just obvious, you know, like, will there be an earthquake in California in 2014? Well, yeah. <laughs> So, so anyway, we have to evaluate that. So we get together a group of us, uh, maybe six to eight, 10 people, and we sit and go through each claim. It's really fun, but we got about 900 more to go. And then on Thursday night, I have trivia. So if you guys are around California time, 6.30, come over to Facebook. You'll find that we have it. We have a lot of fun. We go for about three, three and a half hours. It's a blast. And you don't have to know anybody. We'll put you in a room with somebody. Anything else, Janice, you got going? No, not not so far. No, just these a lot of these videos. You've got that uh, article that's coming out here pretty soon, hopefully with the- uh... Oh, yeah, actually, uh, that reminds me of another one too. Um, I forget, cause I'm like in the, doing this all the time. And it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, the, the, uh, there was an article that was put out by some people at University of Virginia about eye tracking and rapid prompting method. And we've written a a critique to that, and it's still in the review process. There's they're sending it for peer review, um, so I don't know whether they'll accept it or not. It, the fact that the article got um, accepted at all, the original article got accepted at all, doesn't look, really look good for the peer review process. But anyway, we're hoping that we'll at least have our our um, critique published at some point 
And then I also learned that um, I've been writing an article with two people who are human rights activists. And that article is gonna come out in February in the, the um, Human Rights Quarterly. So once that's out, we'll put links to everybody. Oh, so. that'd be great to hear. And yeah. you have, you've been doing your beautiful art. Yep, I've been working website. on artwork, yeah. Your website, yeah. She, she does a lot of amazing, beautiful stuff of Maine. I have a piece right here I'm looking at. Oh, look at that. You do a lot of collage, right? I do a lot of collage, yeah. Lately, I've been doing altered books just for something to do because I have a lot of like, I don't want to be, I'm not spending a lot of money at the moment and I have a lot of old books kicking around. I'm like, what can I do? I'll tear this up and make it into something. So yeah, so Pine Pine is, Sparrow all... is, my, is my website. Say it again because it cut out. Pine Cone and Sparrow. Yeah. So. Beautiful, beautiful stuff, especially if you love uh, nature and um, Maine. Yeah, I do kind of Maine themed things. I got to get to there. I got to get, I got to get to Maine, you guys. I think you'd like it. Yeah. I, I know I'd love it. Yeah. We got it. I don't eat lobster though. So I'm not going to eat fish. We don't have to eat lobster. Anything that's, I thought, it was pro, I thought it was. We have party. regular food here. Yeah. Do you have a McDonald's over there? Yeah, we have. <laughs> Right up the road. I haven't had McDonald's in four weeks, you guys. So there. <laughs> it's tough, but you can I, if I you come to this area, you can see Stephen King's house and they're making it into a museum, I think. And uh yep. I'm Go sure. on the the ghost tour in October. <laughs> I'm looking forward to all that <laughs> next year. Um Wendy Hughes made sure to, to make sure to privately tell you thank you. And she she had to take her dog out for a walk. Oh, thank she, she, yeah, I believe. But so, thank you guys for hanging around. Thank you for your questions. It's a lot of fun. This yeah. is creating a record for um, people. Hopefully, will be able to get some information out there about facilitated communication. I don't think anybody's gone to this much depth. It took a pandemic. Not from the not from the critical point of view. No, I think this is the place to come if you want a critical review of facilitated. Yeah, communication. I think the people who've been watching have been watching. You know, a lot of our videos in the past. Uh, that we've done and they're like wait a minute <laughs> what i think they're going to be able i'm going to have this on trivia you guys i'll have a whole category on facilitated communication <laughs> there you go some people will be like i got this and other people are like i don't know what's what facilitated communication what the, i should do that i should do that that that's a probably a good topic anybody who decided to watch the end of this video We'll have some ideas about what will be on this week's trivia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Janice, it's so good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you too. Everything yeah. looks great and, and good. Yeah. And my my area is still very gold. Make sure everybody goes and looks at my face. Yeah, that's it's crazy. Really nice. It's yeah. gold outside. I wanted to work in the yard today. I did yesterday and I'm thinking it's a perfect day. The weather is perfect. It's calm, quiet, no wind. It is just quiet. That's kind of creepy though. It is very creepy. If the birds weren't doing noises, I would be freaked out. But yeah. no planes, no no traffic sounds. And I'm in a city. It's like yeah. it's like something from a you know what it's just like? It's like something from a twilight zone. Ooh. Except maybe we're the in the twilight zone. zone. Dun, 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 <laughs> dun, dun. Well, the least a twilight zone would be over. <laughs> well it's only 60 minutes or whatever <laughs> not not this world we're living in right now no it's kind of crazy well i hope you stay safe and things are okay yeah, you I, i'm gonna go to the grocery store and get my mouth like everybody else and then i'm gonna eat lunch bye, bye everybody bye thanks everybody thanks